Amidst the deafening roars of the Iran-Iraq War, in a brazen assault, Iraqi warplanes descended upon an offshore terminal nestled in the Strait of Hormuz, igniting a devastating fire that engulfed an entire fleet of five tankers. Their sinister intent was unmistakable, to sever Iran's vital oil lifeline. Among the tankers was the Seawise Giant, stretching an unmatched 458 meters, or 1,504 feet. She was the largest ship in the world, and dwarfed all other vessels in her path. Her colossal weight, an eye-popping 564,763 tons, rendered her the envy of the seas. Yet her vastness became her Achilles' heel. The unforgiving flames closed in on the Seawise Giant, rendering her defenseless and shrouding her in an inferno that threatened to consume her entirely. Tall and proud. Sumitomo Heavy Industries in Japan accomplished a monumental task between 1974 and 1979, the construction of Seawise Giant, the longest self-propelled ship in history. The ship's creation resulted from a deal between the Japanese builders and a Greek company. However, due to the Greek buyer's bankruptcy, they were unable to purchase the ship. Consequently, an extensive arbitration process took place, eventually allowing Sumitomo to sell the ship to a new buyer, the Hong Kong-based Orient Overseas Container Line. Initially, the delivery of CY's Giant faced delays due to severe vibration issues. Yet, the skilled engineers resolved these problems before the ship entered service. Named after her owner's name, CY Tung, CY's Giant underwent a process called jumboization, involving the addition of a middle section to lengthen the ship. After two years, the vessel reached her final length, twice that of the Titanic, and almost as tall as the Petronas Towers. The ship had an impressive 46 tanks, capable of carrying 4 million barrels of crude oil, two propellers, a vast deck space of 339,500 square feet, and a displacement of 646,000 tons. Known by many names. In 1981, the Behemoth of the Seas was launched into the vast waters, with a breathtaking capacity of 564,763 metric tons dead weight. Seawise Giant stretched across the horizon, measuring an impressive 458.45 meters in length overall. Her deck space spanned a staggering 31,541 square meters and accommodated 46 tanks. She was a floating leviathan, one of the largest moving objects ever constructed. Yet despite her grandeur, Seawise Giant had her limitations. Her speed was modest, propelling herself through the waters at a mere 16 knots, or 30 kilometers per hour. Plus, bringing such a colossal vessel to a halt required a distance of 9 kilometers, and executing a turn demanded a clearing spanning at least 3 kilometers. The ship relied on two Mitsubishi steam engines, which boasted a mind-boggling 50,000 horsepower, powered by Ljungstrom turbines. Unsurprisingly, navigating treacherous straits and rocky waters demanded unwavering vigilance, as the ship required constant monitoring to ensure her safe passage. In addition, the transfer of cargo was a perilous endeavor, as Seawise Giant frequently operated in the open sea, lacking the refuge of a secure harbor due to her sheer size. When fully laden, the ship's draft reached 80 feet, rendering her impractical to maneuver in certain areas, like the English Channel. Furthermore, her length exceeded the limits imposed by the Panama and Suez Canals, confining her mighty presence to the open oceans. Every aspect of Seawise Giant was monumental, from her commanding rudder and propellers to her colossal 36-ton anchor. Nevertheless, she was not designed for speed, maneuverability, or even longevity. Regardless, she would be known by various names, such as Opama, Happy Giant, Yara Viking, Nak Nevis, and Mont, and her magnitude earned her a place in the annals of maritime history. Thicker Than Water the beginning of the giant's service life was rather uneventful. Siwa's giant embarked on her service, gracefully traversing the vast oceans, ferrying goods between the Middle East and the United States. For years, from 1979 to 1988, she faithfully carried the lifeblood of the Middle East, oil, to the shores of America, navigating the treacherous waters with ease. Yet fate had an unforeseen twist in store, as the tumultuous Iran-Iraq war cast its ominous shadow upon the vessel's future. On May 14, 1988, Siwa's Giant was at rest, anchored near Lorak Island in the Strait of Hormuz along Iran's coastline. The war's hostilities had escalated, and Iraq sought to cripple Iran's oil revenue, a vital resource for financing their relentless conflict. 
Thus, Iraqi jets embarked on daring sorties, spanning over 750 miles each way, engaging in mid-air refueling to reach their targets. The tranquil calm shattered as the thunderous roar of Iraqi warplanes heralded their arrival. With unwavering determination, they unleashed a fierce assault upon the offshore terminal in the Strait of Hormuz. In a nightmarish scene, five oil-laden tankers stood vulnerable amidst the chaos. The colossal seawise giant, a titan even among some of the largest ships in the world, became a conspicuous target, her immense size rendering her an easy mark. Explosions filled the air, flames engulfed the sky, and the once majestic vessel succumbed to the raging inferno. Helplessly, Siwa's giant teetered on the precipice, swallowed by the shallow waters that lay nearby. The Spanish tanker Barcelona, weighing a staggering 235,000 tons, faced a similar fate, sinking alongside Siwa's giant. Three other ships endured varying degrees of damage, but managed to stay afloat amidst the wreckage. With heavy hearts, the maritime community declared Siwa's giant a total loss but her fate would soon be overturned. A Happy Giant For several months, the wreckage of CY's giant held the title of the world's largest wreck. However, given her immense size, it was only a matter of time before another shipping company would seize the opportunity to resurrect her. After the Iran-Iraq War came to an end in 1989, Norman International stepped in and acquired the shattered remains of the colossal vessel, embarking on the daunting task of salvaging and restoring the ship. The extensive repair work spanned two years and was carried out in Singapore. Once the restoration was completed, the ship found a new lease on life under a different name and ownership. In 1991, the ship re-emerged from the extensive refurbishment and proudly sailed once again, now christened as Happy Giant. Shortly thereafter, in the same year, the revitalized tanker caught the attention of Jorgen Yara, a prominent Norwegian shipping magnate. Recognizing the potential and grandeur of the ship, Yara acquired her for a sum of $39 million. With this new acquisition, the largest ship in the world received her third name, the Yara Viking. Under the Norwegian flag, she embarked on her maritime adventures for 13 years. Incidentally, during that time, Yara Viking garnered further recognition when she became a featured subject on the renowned BBC series Jeremy Clarkson's Extreme Machines. Lessons learned. Seawise Giant once reigned as the largest ship ever built. Yet, as time went on, it became apparent that size alone did not guarantee success. Instead, the immense proportions of the ship proved to be more of a burden than an advantage. To begin with, her colossal draft made it impossible for her to anchor in most ports around the world. By 2004, the shortcomings of Seawise Giant were becoming increasingly evident. Olsen tankers first recognized the impracticality of such a massive vessel for modern oil transportation. Lacking altogether in maneuverability, her sheer weight posed a constant risk of running aground. With a heavy heart, the decision was made to sell the giant ship. Thus, Siwa's giant was reborn again as the Nak Nevis under new ownership. However, instead of sailing the vast oceans, she found renewed purpose as a stationary storage tanker. The ship's immense size meant that its operation incurred significant losses, confirming the decision for a new role. Converted into a floating storage and offloading unit, the Nak Nevis found her place in the Persian Gulf at the Al Shaheen oil field. For five years, she faithfully served as a storage vessel, but eventually the time came to meet her fate, much like her predecessor, the supertanker Batilis, which had been taken out of service in 1986. Towards the end of 2009, Nak Nevis, now known as Mont, bid farewell to her days of grandeur, and sailed to the Alang Sosia shipbreaking yards in India, the Sierra Leone flag flying proudly atop her mast. There, among the largest ship dismantling areas in the world, she would find her resting place. The once mighty giant was joined by countless other vessels as they were beached and scrapped, leaving a legacy of awe and a reminder that bigger is not always better.